for today's event, um, this is a part of our programming and outreach for Nutrition Month this March. Uh, Nutrition Month is our opportunity to not only work with our partners to provide nutrition education to our community members, but it's also a chance to highlight how organizations throughout our county are working together to fight food insecurity while also providing nutritious food to people in need. And today we are joined here by two registered dietitians from the Anne Arundel County Public Schools, but, on, but unfortunately only one of them can use their voice today. <laughs> so Carrie Foy, who has been key in putting this presentation together uh, today, um, she's under doctor's orders not to use her voice and she's recovering. But Stacey Masco, who's also been key in developing this event, will field all of the questions uh, during this event today. So Stacy, can you please introduce yourself and describe your pro professional background? Sure. Um, so I graduated from Virginia Tech. I have been a registered dietitian for 25 years. Uh, the last 12 years I've been with Anne Arundel County Public School System. Here I oversee um, anything that has to do with food and nutrition in 25 of our schools. I also share right now with Carrie um, the responsibility of meeting with parents and school nurses in, I guess I take half and she takes half, of, um, uh, or she, I take half and she takes half of the county um, and we field any questions with kids that have celiac disease, um, diabetes, uh, food allergies. So we really uh, meet one-on-one -on -one with parents um, to see what they can eat in the schools and to offer any guidance that they have or that they might need. Um, I'm responsible for gathering and collecting all of our nutrition data. So all of our food labels, um, food ingredient listings, nutritionals for both the foods that we offer in the schools, as well as for any new foods um, potentially coming in. And then finally, I am the nutrition representative for all of our wellness initiatives um, with Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Previously to that, I started my career at Head Start um, I oversaw the nutrition department for Delaware County Head Start program, which is right outside of Philadelphia. From there, I worked for approximately, not quite 10 years at U.S. Food Service, um, where I managed a team of dietitians where we wrote menus for any federally funded program that needed um, specific menus throughout the country. Um, and then finally, I was at Sodexo prior to coming here. Great. And then... Oh. Yeah. Um, and I do have Carrie's bio if you want me to read that. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Carrie worked so hard on this event as well. So please let us, uh, please do that. So Carrie is another registered dietitian. Um, we're actually down a dietitian right now, um, just like everybody. So if anybody knows of anyone that wants to apply, uh, typically we have four registered dietitians on staff here. So it's myself, it's Carrie. Um, we're looking to hire somebody else, and then it's our supervisor, Jody Rissi. Um, so I have, I'm just going to read it off of here, Carrie's bio. Um, she graduated from Syracuse University with a degree in clinical di uh, dietetics and is a registered dietitian with over 20 years of experience. She began her career in child nutrition while working for the Maryland Department of Health in, her, in two of their adolescent psychiatric centers. There, she assessed resident nutrition status and provided nutrition education and counseling service uh, services. She joined Anne Arundel County Public Schools a little over two years ago as an area specialist and manages over 20 school cafeterias and 60 staff members. And she loves helping fuel students for success both in and out of the classroom. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And I know that both of you had put together a brief presentation that's an overview of the food nutrition program at the Anne Arundel County Public Schools. So let me go ahead and share my screen and Stacy, please take that away. Perfect, thanks Melanie. Um, so what we have here, I'm not gonna read each of these slides. Um, I know this will be video. So if there's stuff or information you wanna go back to, definitely feel free. But we just wanted to give everybody a brief overview of what we do and some of the services that we offer. Um, so if you want to go ahead and start with the first page. Um, at Anne Arundel County Public Schools, we offer breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a summer program. Um, so on the next slide, 
you'll see we have our breakfast. So we offer breakfast in two different ways. Every school in our county offers breakfast. We've offered breakfast for over 20 years in our county. Um, we have a traditional breakfast service, which is what you probably think of, where students go through the cafeteria line. They choose their meal components, and then they either eat in the cafeteria or they take that to the classroom with them. Here in Maryland, we have another program called Maryland Meals for Achievement. Um, and that's a program where if you're in a school that has 40% or more students on free and reduced meals, everybody in the school system eats, or everybody in that school eats for free. So in that school, kids will get a container um, that they can then take, the container contains their breakfast. They can take that to the classroom and um, they consume their breakfast in class. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see the list of schools. So these are all the schools that participate in Maryland Meals for Achievement. The next slide um, goes over our lunch program. So just like all public schools in um, the country, we participate in the National School Lunch Program. At our school, uh, for the most part, everybody goes through a line. So they go through the line, they pick whatever entree they want. They can also uh, choose a hot vegetable. And then you get to our salad bar, which I'll go through in a second. Um, we also have the option of a grab and go lunch. And this is good for kids that either need to go to another part of the building that maybe can't eat, you know, tacos or lasagna or something that might be a little bit messier. Um, it's also good for students that might have food allergies or they don't like what's being served. Um, there's just another option for them. If you go to the next slide, Melanie, you can see this is a picture of what our salad bar looks like. Um, prior to COVID, it was more of a traditional salad bar that you would see, you know, at the Giant or um, Whole Foods or Wegmans or, you know, where kids could actually make salads. They could cup out their own fruits and vegetables. Since COVID, everything is prepackaged. Um, we do get our local vegetable vendor to do a lot of that prepackaging for us. So in this picture, you'll see there's broccoli, there's cherry tomatoes, things like that. So they do that prior to it coming um, to us. But the thing that makes Anne Arundel County unique is we do unlimited fruits and vegetables. So as the students go through the line, they can take as many as they want, um, which is really great if you have after school programming or, you know, they want something for later or, you know, they're a high school student and they just need more calories or they're hungrier. Um, they can take as much or as little as they want. Um, one of the standards is they have to take at least one fruit or vegetable, and that is a federal standard. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, um, this just has to do with our after school dinner program. So our after school dinner program is for schools that have at least 50% free or reduced um, students that qualify for free and reduced meals. They also have to have some type of after school education or enrichment program. So this could be um, what we call here SAC, which is an after school um, program run by Par Parks and Rec, um, where kids go uh, until their parents can come and pick them up. It's usually in elementary schools. Um, there's also, you know, study groups or sports. They just have to have something after school. Um, they do have to eat it on property, so it's not something that they can take and go. And it is a grab and go option, meaning we put it in a container that um, they can use so they can eat it anywhere in the school, whether it's on the sports field or on the playground or in the cafeteria or in, um, you know, a classroom or something like that. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide, and this will show all the schools that are participating in the after school dinner program right now. Um, again, this program is free to anybody that qualifies. I'm sorry, this program is free to any school that qualifies. So if your school is participating and you're staying after school, you can get a free dinner. Uh, the next slide talks about summer meals. So we also participate in summer. Um, if you want to go back one slide, Melanie, real quick. Um, we also participate in summer. Again, in order to be a summer site, you have to have 50% of the students um, or kids uh, receiving free and reduced priced meals. So that's the first thing. Um, and then typically we'll go to schools that have some kind of programming or something at the school. 
They can get breakfast and lunch. Um, we also have mobile. So we go out into communities and deliver meals, um, breakfast and lunch. So we'll have designated sites. Kids must eat at the site. So whether they're at the school or they pick up their meal from a mobile um, van or bus, they do have to eat their meals there on site. Um, our mobile meals are lunch only. Schools are breakfast and lunch. <laughs> the thing that's unique about this program is it is available to any kids between the ages of two and 18. So they don't have to go to AACPS schools. Um, obviously, if you're two, three, four, you might not be in school yet anyway. Um, the only criteria is you have to be between the ages of two and 18. You can come with an older sibling. You can come with a friend. Um, you don't have to have a parent there. It's kind of a no questions asked, you know, come and get a free lunch, come and get a free breakfast. And then if you go to the next slide, this is currently where we will be hosting all of our summer food service programs this school year, or this summer. So on the left-hand side is all of our elementary and, well, actually all of our school sites. And then um, on the right-hand side, these are all of our mobile sites. So we have five mobile buses or vans that go out into the community. So you can see each of them listed there. And then these are the sites that they stop off at. And then on our last page, we just put some resources on here and you can go ahead and follow up on these um, you know, at a later time. But these are all on our website, different places where you can go. So we have the meal benefit application. This is where our parents um, can fill out to see if they qualify for free and reduced meals. Um, we have an Anne Arundel County food resource listing. We have um, the county uh, food access warm line. We have some information about our Brooklyn Park food pantry. So we partner with the Department of Health to put this on. Um, and then finally, just information about us. Here's our actual website. Um, so you can go to AACPS schools um, backslash nutrition, and that'll come up to us. Or you can just go to AACPS um, Dot org and click on nutrition. And then we also have a Twitter account and our direct phone number. And that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Melanie. Of course. No, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, and, you know, I, I would venture to guess that many people didn't know just the significant reach that you provide throughout our entire community. So yeah, we, we thank you for, for all of that. Um, so that was the, the first part of our, our presentation here today, the event. Um, so let's jump into that second part where I've prepared a list of questions for, for Stacy and Carrie to, well, Stacy to answer. Um, but before we do that, I just really, really quick, I wanna talk about Anne Arundel County Food Bank and our mission here. So it, it's our mission to alleviate food insecurity in Anne Arundel County by partnering across our community to obtain and distribute nourishing food to our neighbors in need. Um, and food insecurity is one of those phrases that we talk about a lot. Um, and its definition is really powerful because food insecurity is the lack of consistent access to healthy, affordable food. And it's this consistent access to healthy, affordable food that remains a significant challenge for many people in our community. And here at the Anne Arundel County Food Bank, the, the number of people seeking assistance at our local uh, food bank or food pantries is still significantly higher than we were pre-pandemic. And, and that number is 38,000 visits to our Anne Arundel County member food pantries every single month. And we're seeing that number starting to rise again month after month. And mostly that's, a lot of that's attributed to inflation, which is at a 40 year high. And many of the households across our community are finding it difficult to meet the rising food and basic necessities, or the, the rise in the cost of food and other basic necessities. And, and then we compound that with the extended SNAP benefits that expired on March 1st. Um, SNAP, as you know, stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. And that was formerly known as the Food Stamp Program. But, but here in Anne Arundel County, the average SNAP reduction that our, our families, the households are seeing is about $82 per month 
um, that will be taken away. And that's about 23 fewer meal, meals per month. So with all that in mind, Stacey, um, how, how does food insecurity impact school-aged children? Yeah, um, as most of us know, it's obviously a, a huge impact. Um, here in Anne Arundel County this year, we have about 42% of our kids on free and reduced price meals. So we definitely have food insecurity here. Um, we definitely see it in pockets um, as well as throughout all communities. So it's in every single one of our schools. Um, you know, it negatively impacts their ability to concentrate and academically, you know, achieve academically, which is what we're all about in the school system. You know, when you go into school and your stomach hurts and you're hungry, the only thing you're thinking about is where your next meal is coming from. So you're not thinking about what's going on in math class or even, you know, hanging out with your friends on the playground before school. You're just thinking, what time is lunch? What are they going to have at breakfast? Um, is there something I can put in my backpack for later? Um, do my friends have extra food? So that's, you know, all encompassing. Not only are they dealing with that, but they struggle with just social and behavioral problems. So they have anxiety, they're anxious. Um, some are aggressive, you know, they act out in class or they act out with their peers. Um, research has shown that there's a larger incidence of depression. They have low self-esteem. Um, they're embarrassed. They want to be like their peers, which is why some of the programs that we have are so beneficial, you know, whether it's the breakfast program or the dinner program where everybody comes in and eats. Um, they've shown that there's developmental delays in younger kids. Um, there's risk of chronic illnesses, um, higher incidences of asthma and anemia. Um, and then finally, research just shows that students with food insecurity have lower test scores. They tend to repeat grades or not pass grades. They get suspended from school. They're, you know, sick more often. And these are the kids that really need to be in school in order to get, you know, food or to learn or to advance. Um, and they, they're just not there. No, thank you. Thank you so much for that and, and giving that, that great overview of just the challenges that, that students uh, face um, in light of food insecurity. Um, and food insecurity is a huge, huge concern, but are, are there additional concerns that you see regarding nutrition for children and adolescents? And, and what do you think parents should look out for? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, we're kind of in a, a perfect storm right now. Um, you know, energy balance is out of whack in kids. Um, they're in, they have excessive intakes of dietary fats, saturated fats, sugar, sodium, they're lacking essential uh, vitamins and minerals. Um, and, and part of it has to do with where we are as a society right now. So, um, you know, these kids grew up with the internet. They don't know anything different. They have instant gratification. You know, they want to watch a movie, they can watch it. They want to watch a TV show, it's there. There's no commercials. Um, you know, whatever they want, they can typically find. And you know, that comes over then to convenience issues and social media, which plays a huge part in nutrition right now. They're used to getting things quickly. So, you know, I know fast food's been around for a long time. I know it's been a problem for a long time, but it's becoming even more of a problem. You know, after practice, there's no time. So parents stop off at Chick-fil-A, at McDonald's. Um, kids think that it's really cool to bring those items into school. Um, they don't even have to leave. They can DoorDash or call Uber Eats, um, you know, to bring it right to them. So it's just very, very convenient to get those fast food things. Social media is also playing a huge role in this, um, especially as kids get older. They're on TikTok and all of these other things where all these influencers are, you know, showing all these different combinations you can get at fast food restaurants, or they're showing the sports drinks or energy bars or these other types of convenience foods. So kids want those items. Younger kids might not be on TikTok, but they see their older peers having those. Um, so again, it's just kind of this perfect storm that's that's really brewing. Um, and I know Carrie can attest to this, you know, we go into schools and, you know, especially in the elementary schools, if a kid even knows what a peach is, um, they definitely don't know that it came from a tree, which is shocking, but it happens all the time. Um, eggs, they have no idea they came from a chicken. Um, so they're just really getting away from whole foods and eating whole foods that aren't significantly processed. 
Um, and I think that that's a problem. Um, I think it's a big problem. Um, as far as parents, what can we watch out for? You know, the number one thing as a parent or even as an adult or a, a figure in a school is just role modeling. You know, at the end of the day, you're a live person, you're not on TikTok, um, and they see what you do and they model that behavior. The other thing is just like with everything else, just observing what they're doing, observing what they're eating um, and talking to them about it. So if you have young kids, obviously they're probably not making a lot of the food choices. Um, you're preparing foods, you're buying the foods, but talk to them about the choices that you are making and why you are doing that. And maybe take them to the grocery store and let them choose some things or let them ask questions. If you have an older um, child, you know, see what they're doing. What are they eating when they're out with their friends? What are they bringing to school if they're packing their lunch? What are they taking to after school if they're involved in sports or band um, or chorus and really have discussions with them about the choices that they're making. And then, like I said in the beginning, the biggest thing is just being a positive role model yourself. So if you also are doing all the fast food and, you know, all the convenient type stuff where it's really quick because we're all super busy, you know, you might want to take a time and reflect that that's what they are yes. learning as well. No, yeah, thank you, Stacey. That that's terrific advice. I know I'm also I, I'm a mother of a uh, high schooler, and you know, time is always something that I don't have enough of. And and taking that time to kind of reflect on everything that I'm doing and making sure that you know they have that that road forward and that path forward is, is super super important. And, and and just education in general is is super important. And I, this question, I wanted to focus on the nutrition education that is being offered at the public schools and, and even another step forward, like what, how el additional ways that parents can continue the education in their own homes. Yeah, so nutrition education is we've throughout the entire curriculum at Anne Arundel County Public Schools. So every student in elementary school has to take gym and PE. Um, so there's nutrition education that the PE teachers teach um, and there's lessons that they incorporate through that. They also have health mixed in where they get some of that information. Um, at the middle school, again, you have PE three out of the four semesters and the other semester is health. So nutrition ed is put into that curriculum. And then in high school, you only take two semesters of PE. Um, but then you have some extracurricular or you have elective classes that you can take. So both at the middle and high school level, um, we have, it's called FACTS now, it used to be called Home Ec, but it's Family and Consumer Sciences. And there's all types of nutrition and cooking classes that you can go ahead and elect to take. And then I know at the high school level, they also have an honors nutrition um, class as well. Um, I know that they also incorporate things throughout uh, different classes. So for instance, you know, in your science class, you might be learning about hydroponics, you might be learning about nutrition and biology or in chemistry. I know when my um, kids were little at, uh, let's see, I, I guess it was at Germantown Elementary School, they had a Halloween event where people brought in various sized pumpkins. And, you know, we counted the pumpkin seeds inside to see do bigger pumpkins have more pumpkin seeds than smaller pumpkins. And they don't. Um, statistically, they're just bigger seeds. Um, same amount, just bigger. So, you know, there's different ways to incorporate nutrition through different lessons. Um, and we do a really good job with that. And then at like a classroom level, uh, you know, teachers do brain breaks throughout the day, especially in the younger ages. So a lot of those brain breaks have to do with nutrition or nutrition lessons. Many of our elementary schools have school gardens, um, which is an excellent way to learn about nutrition. Um, whether they're planting things or harvesting things. Um, I know that there's also over the summer, there are some garden groups um, for summer camps just to maintain the gardens. And unfortunately where we live, that's where most of the produce is grown. Um, but it's still a really good education experience for the schools that do have that. And then finally, um, you know, meal service is an awesome time to learn just nutrition education and they don't even know it. So every time they come through one of our lines, they see fortune control. They see what does a normal size piece of chicken look like or what a half a cup of vegetables look like. Um, they're constantly reminded to fill half their plates with fruits and vegetables. Um, in each of our schools, our menus posted on the My Plate sign so they can see, you know, what really are fruits and what are considered vegetables and what are protein sources. So, you know, even as adults, we have people that 
fully believe a potato is a grain um, because it's starchy. And so they try and make those substitutions. So it's a good way to look at that. And then finally, also, you know, as they go through the line, they learn what's in food items. You know, we do have a lot of mixed items, lasagna, um, teriyaki chicken, and there's a different ingredients in there. So they can learn the different components of what they're actually eating. Um, Going back, I think your second question was just how parents can, you know, help out with this at home and do some more nutrition ed. Um, again, the strongest thing is just being a good role model, like we talked before, you know, really modeling what does good nutrition look like, eating, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, um, you know, cooking with your kids. Um, the whole discussion piece, asking what they did in school. What did you eat at lunch? Um, you know, what other items did they offer that you didn't select? Why didn't you select those? Talking about the lessons maybe that they learned in class. Um, going further, talking about what are each of those for younger kids meal components. So if you had the chicken teriyaki, you know, what is that a protein? Is that a grain? And kind of teaching them that. Um, cooking, cooking at home. So if you have a younger student um, or a younger child, cook with them. You know, even little, little kids, they can help make, you know, cookies, um, which is something that they might eat or whatever the case is. Cooking with them young teaches them how to do it. And then as they get older, maybe give them a challenge where they can cook at home. They cook a meal for the family one day a week or they put together a grocery list. Um, you can take them to the grocery store, help them or have them help pick out foods, explain why you may or may not choose different foods, um, looking at food labels. So that's another lesson that's taught in schools that you can definitely reinforce at home by having them read a food label to you or comparing two different food labels at a grocery store or something that you have and, you know, asking them their thoughts on some of that. Um, if you have athletes, talking to them about, you know, if they're older, maybe they have, you know, more a uh, nutritional need. So I have a high schooler who plays lacrosse and he's six two. So he's going to need to eat a lot more than my seventh grader who's five one. Um, and just talking through why it might be appropriate for him to make some of the decisions he's making, whereas my younger son might be making different decisions um, just based on activity level and, you know, where they are and growth spurts and things like that. Um, a garden in the summer is also an excellent, um, you know, thing to do. So there's so many nutrition lessons in a garden, you know, from where things come from and how they grow and just getting them excited to try new things. So in my own house, we, both of my kids have their own gardens. It's just a small four by four little plot. They've had them forever. And, you know, when they were younger, we did things like purple carrots or um, I got this from a school, uh, watermelon radishes, you know, things that looked a little bit different, but still all tasted the same. And now that they're older, they choose what they do. So my older high schooler this year is doing a salsa garden because he puts pico de gallo on everything. So that's what he's going to grow. Um, and it's just a, it's a, it's a nice way to bond as a family, but also to talk about nutrition, introduce them to new foods and, and get them to try cooking. Nice. Oh, I love it. I, absolutely I could keep going. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that's also garden. I think I'll have to try that at my house as well. And what a great way to continue that conversation about nutrition um, with with your child with with, with hands on activities as well. So it, it's wonderful. Um, at, at the beginning of your presentation, uh, you had talked about many programs at the Anne Arundel County Public Schools are currently providing throughout our county, but are, are there more nutrition uh, resources that you'd like to talk, uh, tell us about today? Sure, so, um, you know, we did give some good resources in the very beginning, but I know it was very, very quick. Um, if you go onto our website, you can see just about everything that I've talked about here. So you can view all of our menus. You can look at all of our nutrition fact sheets. You can get all of our ingredient listings. You can get all of our recipes so you can see exactly what's in that teriyaki chicken and, you know, the ingredients for every single thing that is in there. Um, you can get all of our summer meal times. So I gave you a, a you know, you had a quick glimpse um, of where all of our sites were, but you can actually see what times we'll be serving food from there. And you can go back as a resource for that. We also have a wellness page um, that is super robust. So as I mentioned before, I'm part of the wellness committee um, for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And then I'm also the nutrition chair for you know, wellness throughout the county. 
Um, and so we really believe in the 10 components of the CDC model. So if you're looking for any other areas of wellness besides nutrition, you can find those there. But we have a really good nutrition uh, page there as well. And we have resources on there and they're done by category. So whether it's for students, whether it's for staff, whether it's for community members, or whether it's for families, you can find things that you need. Um, and it can be anything from how to make a healthy meal to recipes to what teens should eat if they're involved in sports, um, eating on a budget, uh, menu planning. So there's a lot of different information on there that you can definitely check out. And then finally, I know it's not Anne Arundel County Public Schools, but we partner really, really closely with the Department of Health. Um, so if you go on their website, they have a very, very robust um, nutrition section as well, where you can find out, you know, even more than on our website and you can find different resources. Well, fan fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all of those. And when we do post this video, I will have links uh, to, to all of the, the different things that you had just talked about and make sure that we're, we're spreading that information as widely as possible. But um, during this time, that actually concludes the questions that I have for, for you today. But I wanted to open it up to the people that are also attending here today. It, there's not that many of us. So if there are questions, if, if, you know, if you'd like to either put them in the chat box or you can also unmute and ask your question to us as well. Um, please go ahead and do that at this time. looking quiet in our group here today. But, uh, Stacey... As a grandmother, okay. Oh, yes, I've got three grandchildren right now, uh, two in elementary and one in middle school. And I know that when they come to my house, it's like trying to get them to eat something um, that's healthy. It, my daughter has a hard time getting the girls to eat healthy. Um, it, school lunches, I... It was very nice and, and informative to see what you guys are doing in the, in the public schools with that. Um, any hints on how to make nutritional food more appealing to 11 and 13 year olds? I would very much appreciate it. Yeah, so I only can speak from my own experience. Um, I will say, you know, grandma's house is still a place where, you know, everything in moderation. And, you know, I know my kids go to grandma's house and she always has cookies there for them, no matter what I say. You know, and I remember my own grandmother's house. You have those little things. And so while I think it's great for you to introduce all of that stuff, you know, those memories and that comfort is, you know, that's an important part of growing up as well. Um, I know for me, um, one thing that I did with my kids when they were younger, so your girls might be a little bit older for this, and it, I don't know how it started, but it started, again, you know, they start watching TV, and, you know, you always hear about the mindless eating, so I just started making them literally a plate of fruit and vegetables, and they would sit there and mindlessly eat those at a very young age while they're watching TV, and I don't even think they knew what they were eating, they would just sit there and eat that, and to this day, their favorite thing for me to make for them is a plate of fruit and vegetables. And this was before charcuterie boards were popular. Um, and I didn't put any thought into it. I just opened a, you know, a bag of baby carrots and I put that on the plate and would cut up, you know, some apples or grapes or whatever I had around. And they would just mindlessly eat that. Um, so, you know, sometimes just when they're zoning out and they're on their phones or whatever, if you just put something in front of them and it's shocking. And my husband gets a little annoyed with me, but like, Grapes, for instance, they love grapes, but if I have them in the refrigerator and they're on the vine, um, they won't eat them. If I wash them and I take every single grape off and put them in a bowl, they're gone before I come home. Um, so sometimes just making things super accessible and super easy, it goes back to that convenience thing that they're used to um, and kind of instant gratification. You know, if it's there, maybe they'll make a better decision than grabbing a bag of um, potato chips. But if they have to do the work for themselves, they're opening up a bag. Um, the other thing, I don't know if you're into gardening at all. I know I talked about it a little bit, but, you know, people in general, girls especially, um, very stereotypical, but they love that stuff. And even if it's just starting out with flowers or something pretty, 
um, you know, getting them to grow something and then cooking it themselves. So whether it's, you know, broccoli or asparagus right now or sugar snap peas, um, you know, just something different. Sometimes if they grow it, they'll try it and they'll realize that they really like it. Um, I know we've done pizza gardens in the past, so that could be even something fun where you grow some basil and, you know, some tomatoes and different things. And maybe they come to your house on Fridays and they pick the ingredients and make homemade pizza. Um, I think just kind of getting them involved in it is extremely helpful. Oh, thank you very much, because that's that's great ideas. So I'm going to work on those. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, good luck. <laughs> I know teenagers are tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Marta, for that question. Do we have any other questions from um, everyone in attendance here today? Or Stacy or yeah. Carrie, do you have anything that you wanted to add? I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I understand there's a farm to school program nationwide. Is that where you get your vegetables from? Um, so the farm to school program is a kind of an initiative, meaning um, it's more of a program versus a place to actually purchase from. So for us, for instance, we have a farm to school week where during that week we buy all local produce um, and we really advertise, you know, this came from this farm and this came from this farm and this is where we got this. And, you know, we encourage kids to eat local. Prior to COVID, we had a pretty robust farm to school program. So prior to COVID, we partnered with, and Carrie, tell me if I'm wrong, I'm going to say three or four very large farms. It might have even been closer to five or six because we can go up to Delaware too and still be considered local. Um, where we would source all of our fruits and vegetables from. Um, and it was great. Like, so kids got to eat local. We did highlights on the farm. So we would take videos um, of us actually picking, you know, a uh, a watermelon or us actually picking a cantaloupe or whatever it happened to be um, that they were growing for us. We'd go down to the farm, we would show what it looked like, us picking it, then us, you know, cutting it, and then it would be on, you know, the line that day. So we do that once a month or once a week, once a month. Um, so we would have that and every school would go ahead and see that and then every school could go ahead and, and try that. It was just produce and fruits and vegetables that we always had on our line. Um, unfortunately, since COVID hit, um, you know, we're lucky to get fruits and vegetables from anywhere. Um, so we struggle just like everybody else does. You know, you go to the grocery store and, you know, it's a lot better now than it was two years ago, but you can still go to the grocery store and look for wheat bread and not have it there. Or, you know, I think the new thing is eggs right now. You know, eggs are hard to get and they're super expensive. So when you multiply, you know, we do 50,000 meals a day. Well, we don't do quite that many, but, um, you know, however many meals we do a day and we have to have that number of items on the menu because we serve the same exact menu in every single one of our schools. So no matter what school you go to, it's the same breakfast, it's the same lunch, it's the same dinner. Um, it's just hard to source that. So unfortunately, we struggle a lot with local right now. So do you think that once the availability gets back, uh comes back more, you will do more of the farm too? A hundred percent. So what we have right now in our bids, so because we're a public school system um, and any government agency, really, we have to have bids for everything we do. So we have written into our bid right now that we, if local's available, that's what we want to source. And because pricing um, is variable on local, we give a certain percentage of what we will pay um, you know, based on that. So we already have it written in. So as soon as we can get it and we can source it, um, then we will do that. And we do get a little bit. I shouldn't say we don't get any. Um, we do get some, but it's not a ton. So hopefully as the growing season now, you know, starts back up, we'll get a little bit more. Um, you know, winter's always hard, but we'll just have to see what's going on. Thank you. Yeah. I will mute myself now. <laughs> <laughs> I can find it. No, great question. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Oh, I think you're on mute, Melanie. Sorry about that. Um, it's behind the computer screen. I have two. 
Um, but are there other questions from uh, from everyone here in attendance? I know we're getting close to the, the end of our time here today. Uh, maybe one more question if there's one out there. Well, it is quiet. So Stacy and Carrie, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap it up here today? I don't think so. I think, you know, the big thing is just really getting out there, um, you know, educating people really on what we do because food service today isn't what it was 20 years ago when we were, well, I was going to say in school, but it was way longer than 20 years ago for me. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it, it does look different. And I think parents are shocked to see when they come through the line what it does look like. And it's nice because now that we're, you know, starting to get over COVID, we're allowed to have people back in schools. Um, so it's great for parents to kind of see what our school lunches really look like. Um, and just that continuing education piece, because Every single year we have a new set of parents, um, we have a new set of people, and it's just educating them that, you know, school meals do look different than before. We do have standards we have to follow, you know, all of our foods are whole grain, um, you know, so even though we might serve baked scoops on our menu, um, they might be different than the baked scoops you actually buy in the grocery store. So some products are formulated just for us. Um, I would also like to say we didn't touch really on allergies and um, food modifications very much. I know that wasn't really part of this, but we do make accommodations all the time. So because we have, you know, 80,000 kids in our system, there's a lot of different needs out there. And that's why Carrie and I, you know, we work really hard in trying to meet with parents and school nurses to make sure that all kids are accommodated, whether you know, they buy lunch or they don't buy lunch, whether they can, they have the money to purchase lunch or whether they're on free and reduced meals. Um, you know, we get calls all the time from kids that are homesick or, you know, they broke their leg and they're not coming into school. And can they pick up a lunch for their student because they miss that? Like it gives them a little piece of, of school and whether they can afford it or not afford it, um, it's, it's from everywhere. So I think that that's really cool. I think that's really great. Um, so we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to talk about what we do and then just share some information on our personal thoughts about nutrition and where we're heading and what we can do. So thanks, yes. Melanie. Of course. No, thank you both to Stacey Masco and Carrie Foy for being here today and putting together this absolutely fantastic presentation. I, I also thank everyone that tuned in today to, to listen and ask questions. Uh, if you do have more, you know, if you want more information about the food resources in our county and different ways for you to get involved in the Anne Arundel County Food Bank, our website is the is a great place for all of that information as well. You can go to www.aafoodbank.org and you'll you'll find just a wealth of information. I also wanted to plug our upcoming Nutrition Month event. Um, it's a, the last one in our series. It's going to focus on Anne Arundel County older adults. Uh, we are partnering, partnering with the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities to host this event. It's free and lunch is included for people 60 years or older. It'll be on March 28th at 11 a.m. at Pasquale Senior Center. So, and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our Nutrition Month sponsors who are Annapolis Pediatrics, Hilton Baltimore BW Airport Hotel, Himmel's Landscape and Garden Center, and Wegmans um, for supporting our Nutrition Month events. And also to all of our partners, just like um, uh, Carrie and Stacy here today from the Anne Arundel County Public Schools for helping us provide this nutrition education throughout the, the month of March during Nutrition Month. So again, thank you so much for being here and happy Nutrition Month to everyone.